Scotland's public services have faced unprecedented challenges throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, and it's never been more important to connect people with the support that matters to them. In this study commissioned by the Royal Society of Edinburgh, we connect with people already providing support in their communities to ask what is social prescribing and how can it contribute to a person-centred recovery for Scotland's public services. I think that's traditionally the terminology as it's a, it's a way from, for health to the fair, their patients into community supports so that's non-medical. But social prescribing, it can be for statutory or for sector organisations or charities as well. In the local communities, whether that's part of a um, part of a local group, whether it's volunteering, whether it's seeking support from local organisations, locally, it's, it's all about um, moving people into um, or helping them get support from the community really. It isn't about people fitting into what uh, statistics can offer. It's about looking to see what they actually want and make it more person-centred. So the kind of goals, I suppose, of the person as well, in terms of what it is that they are looking to achieve, and then trying to really work with them on a on a, on a kind of mutual basis to help and enable them to achieve those goals and to support them to access the different services. You know, Maybe people aren't using so many resources then within our NHS because, you know, and they're not dependent on, you know, that one road into, you know, if things aren't going right, it's that one kind of medical kind of route, so to speak, because that doesn't suit everybody. So a smaller business like mine can focus more on the personal needs of the person. Um, yes, they might not be able to take part in absolutely everything, but there's always a way that you can include people and make it relevant. It's a massive alternative choice to people who don't want medication and don't want either structured group work, which is fairly much, um, you know, what's on offer at the moment. The, the way through tough times is is looking out for each other and being communities with other people, and that the common denominator with every tough time is isolation. So social prescribing is is good in, in that way. For social prescribing to work, organisations need to be funded to run services and activities or there's not going to be any activities or services for people to link in with. I think easier is if any, any kind of national policy was put in place, there was flexible flexibility within that to make it work locally. The buy-in from GPs, um, I think that's a lot of learning. I think every, every time we, we've got a couple of GP sort of champions and advocates and they really I think once one or two of them got it, they were able to sell it to their, their peers. Our people to really have those skills and, um, you know, really be able to feel that they they can take control or, you know, can use different different ways to build themselves up and kind of keep themselves healthy, where, you know, um, within the community and have that connection. And using the assets that are within communities, um, identifying what those assets might be and, 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 and harnessing them and getting people more involved. Mm. Social prescribing is a way of connecting people to the support that means the most to them. It takes many forms and faces lots of challenges, but given the right support, it's clear it has a role to play in the building of a future for Scotland's public services with communities and individuals at its centre.